Welcome to the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast. These podcast episodes with Will and his guests provide you with insights on how you can transform your excuses into results to benefit yourself, your family, your friends, your community, society, humanity, and the universe with what Will calls the ripple effect. Will's mission is to empower 1 billion people via the ripple effect and intends that you'll become a Another person to add to the count, having listened to this episode. Hello and welcome to Make It Happen with Will Polston. I'm Will Polston. This is episode number 58. And in this episode, I am delighted to be joined by one of my personal mentors and someone that I've learned a huge amount by the name of Dr. John D. Martini. Now, this is one of the other episodes that we're doing as part of the the series with the authors from The Secret, which of course Dr. John D. Martini is, and that's to celebrate the five-year anniversary of Make It Happen. We're going to be talking about the gratitude effect, and this is actually a podcast that I've pulled from one of my old podcasts, Mindset with Neil and Will, because the wisdom within it is so valuable that I wanted to get it out for you guys on this show as well. If you're not familiar with Dr. John D. Martini, he's a world-renowned specialist in human behavior, a researcher, author, a global educator, and has been solving personal and professional issues since 1973. He's studied over 30,000 books across all the defined academic disciplines and has synthesized the wisdom of the ages, which he's shared on stage in over 100 countries now. His presentations, whether they're keynotes, seminars, workshops, leave you with insights into your behavior and the keys to your empowerment. And he shared the stage with some of the world's most influential people, such as Sir Brant- Richard Branson, Stephen Covey, Steve Wozniak, Robert Kawasaki, Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, Donald Trump, and many, many more. And I'm delighted to be talking about the gratitude effect with him on this podcast episode for you. The book that we're gonna talk about as the topic is one that I just read recently. I, I, I said read it, I listened to it on audio called The Gratitude Effect. And over the last couple of years, I've gone through my own challenges and working through those challenges. One of the things that I've really tried to focus on is becoming more and more grateful. Every single day I write things that I'm grateful for and I focus down on what it is that I'm grateful for to engage my, my reticular activating system to look for good and things that I can find. I say good things that I can find that I can appreciate. That's really what it's about. Rather than being good or bad, it's about looking for things that I can appreciate. So I would like to welcome to the podcast, Dr. John D. Martini. Well, thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. So The Gratitude Effect is a book that I personally have read recently. Tell us a little bit more about The Gratitude Effect. Well, I was born on Thanksgiving Day. So when I was four, my mother was putting me to bed. And she said that, son, before you go to bed, make sure you count your blessings and think about things you were grateful for in the day. Because those that are grateful for what they have, they receive more things to be grateful for. And I guess that was sort of inculcated into my thinking at a young age. And I really didn't take it as deeply as I could have at the time compared to what later in my life realized how significant that was. And I'm a firm believer that no matter what happens in your life, it's ultimately on the way, not in the way. And so the sooner you're able to find how it is on the way and how it serves your ultimate objectives in life, um, it liberates you from a lot of burden and a lot of baggage that we tend to can accumulate. Because we tend to project our evaluations on things and tend to label them good or bad or right or wrong and moralize them with a the narrowed thinking instead of uh, broaden our mind and see how whatever is happening, how is it helping us? One of the greatest questions we could ever ask ourselves on a daily basis is, how did whatever I experienced today, whether supportive or challenging, at least in appearance, how's it helping me fulfill what's most meaningful to me? And then you extract meaning, which is the mean between these polarities uh, from this event. And when you do, you're grateful. And the great, gratitude is a confirmation of you're seeing the hidden order in your apparent chaos. It's a confirmation that you're seeing things with a broad perspective and a more balanced perspective. A true gratitude comes when you have an equilibrated mind. And many people have confused gratitude when things are supportive. They go, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. But true gratitude is when you find the hidden order in even the things that challenge you and find out how they're actually serving. Because they're not a mistake. They're actually on the way. So the book is a series of chapters dealing with life's issues to assist people in asking a new set of questions to be able to uncover the order that's there inside the things they think are chaotic and to turn it into something they can be thankful for 
and used as fuel instead of baggage. Because anything you can't say thank you for is baggage. Anything you can't say thank you for is fuel. Wow. And one of the ways where I personally experience this, so I, I look to, to find something I'm grateful for every day, 10 things actually that I find that I'm grateful for every day, and I write these down, and I know that you've accumulated quite quite some some level of, of, of daily gratitudes over the years. Well, I, uh, I have 4,000 few hundred pages of gratitudes in 10 point print and one inch margins that I've documented every single day. In fact, I've, I could turn around and I could show you. Yeah, I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to see this. I, uh, it's right here, in fact. So I've got it right here. Had the idea to have lunch for the VIP group, at Park Plaza. So, so I don't. If I'm going to uh, see if we can bring the mic over slightly, just so then people can uh, can hear this as uh, as you're saying it. So this is for for the people that are listening right now. I'm looking at Dr. John D. Martini's gratitude diary right now, which is yeah. What I do. Um, is every single day I write down everything I got to do. Like when we had lunch the other day, you yeah. sent me the picture. Yeah, yeah. I keep a record of the things I'm grateful for every day. Wow. And so it, I have 4,000 and a few hundred pages of that. Plus, when I put it all together, it'd be about 15,000 pages because it's basically pictures, experiences. So. Had the opportunity to have a, a consult with Oscar Duran in Spain, in Madrid. Had an opportunity to present modules at your conference, right? And pictures of that you sent. Somebody sent me a picture with my kids. Somebody found on the internet last night. Oh wow! So I keep records of everything I'm grateful for. Wow. Um, I got to. I have an art collection that I'm about to do an auction for in Australia, and I have uh, people buying my art. I have about 78 pieces that I'm about to sell. So I keep records of everything uh, that I do, day after day after day after day after day. So I'm, I'm looking at this right now, and it is literally pages and pages and pages. And, and what's interesting is it starts with, I had the, well, it starts with had the opportunity to. Yes, I had the opportunity to do this. Um, so I have a, a friend who's worked with Alan Wong, who's a billionaire in, in uh, uh, Hawaii. And I introduced them, and they've opened up a franchise, uh, about a $100 million franchise they've started now. And um, so he was thanking me. So I have things are gratitudes, comments, things I get to do, people that have, have said thank yous, uh, students that have done amazing things. This is my presentation on astrophysics recently that we took a picture of. This is meeting with a, somebody from Parliament. Wow. Meeting a gentleman that plays drums with his feet. He has no arms and legs. I watched that video last night, so you just met up with him. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. And then, uh, so I, I just keep records of my great gratitudes every day. And it's, wow. So and that's, it's, that's some list. So I, I've just personally seen firsthand the gratitude diary of Dr. John Martini, And from... It's 23 volumes now. It's 4,000 something pages now. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, what are the benefits of doing that? Well, I document, I, I, I learned from an Indian mystic named Lakishwa Ram when I was 23, not to go to bed at night um, until you can see whatever happened in the day as something to be grateful for. So if I have this event and it's an easy one to do, I just document it. If others I go, okay, so how did that serve me today? And how is that helping me fulfill my mission? and not to go to bed until I can see it. And so that's what led me to develop the Demartini Method, which is a series of quality questions that help you see the other side. You know, your intuition is always trying to bring the unconscious content up to the conscious level so you can be fully conscious of the events. And when you are, you're grateful because mm. you'll realize that everything is ultimately helping you. Mm. And, and things, you know, we sometimes have events that we think are terrible and then a day, a week, a month, a year, or five years later, we look back and we go, oh, thank God that occurred or thank you for that occurring. And why wait for the wisdom of the ages with the aging process when you could get the wisdom of the ages without it by just looking now mm. and finding it, it's there. So I don't go to bed until I can document whatever happened that day and document what I'm grateful for. And if it's been a particularly challenging day, you just keep looking. I just go and dig until I find it. I have a system on doing that. So 
I, I've been doing it so long, it's, it's not hard to find the blessings in, in whatever's happening. And, um, but I, that's just a ritual, I do that every day. And, and during the day, I'll come up here, if I have a little gap at lunch, I'll come up here and update it and get emails. And, and, um, but I keep stuff, that is done every single day of my life. Wow. That's Seven incredible. days a week. Incredible. So I, I personally had an experience sitting down with Dr. Di Martini over dinner uh, a couple of days ago, and I've got some, there's, there's some stuff that's been going on, and one of the things that I'm trying to do is clear some debt. And what I always struggled with was I was never grateful for the debt. And I, when we were sitting down over dinner the other day, I, I started to change my way of thinking about it, because I was like, well, how can I be grateful for a debt because if I'm if I'm focusing on that thing, then I'm potentially going to manifest more of it into my life. So what can I do here? And the way that I was able to shift that when we sat down the other night was I'm grateful for the fact that what it's made me become aware of was that I brought money as a, a much lower value on my values hierarchy, so I can look at bringing that back up. And it also made me grateful because now knowing what I now know, I can go and share that methodology of with with other people that are also maybe in debt right now and it, the, the thing that inspired that conversation because i've always said to myself i feel a fraud if i haven't done something used it completed it it's all finished with a bow on top and finished and then there you go i can't even con to contemplate starting it but when we were driving and you were telling me that you used to read a book in the day and then teach on it that night i thought well if you would if you were doing that surely then i can start that process start using what's working for me so then the people that haven't even started yet can be using that okay there'll be people that are further down the line but the way i quite often think of of, of me on my personal development journey is there's something called barrel monkeys and the, the barrel monkeys you see them in they're in like film stuff it's a toy it's a game and they all hang on to each other in one long line and I'm just one of those monkeys, and I've got monkeys that are hanging on to me, and there's monkeys that are hanging above me. Every time I jump up one, I bring these monkeys up with me, and then I'm, I'm working my way up the, the, the line of monkeys, uh, so to speak. So it's it's a really powerful way of, of looking at something from a different perspective to be able to find something to be grateful for. Well, you know, there's an exercise I do in my financial program that I teach people how to transform their financial position. Um, many people um, are, are still in debt, be surprised how many people have debt in their, on their hands. And I, I tell them that when you're paying debt, if you're not appreciative of what it represents, it's hard to pay. Mm. They did studies on divorces and they found out that when the husband uh, is paying the alimony or child support and he's bitter and resentful to the person, the probability of him paying it is much less. Mm. But if he's appreciative of what the mother has done, bringing children and, and the experience he's had, then it gets paid. Mm. And I realize that, you know, that applies to everything. If you're not appreciative of something, it's hard for you to want to earn the money to go and pay for it. So if you have debt, the first thing I ask people to do is to take make a list of all the blessings that this debt has brought you. Because maybe you borrowed money and you got something you purchased from it. That means that somebody believed in you and believed you were worthy enough to pay it back. So that meant that they believed that you were worthy, a trustworthy person, and they're worthy of the credit. And so in the process of doing it, you sit down and write down the benefits of that and all of what you did get out of it. Because there's no doubt that you have debt and you have that and you have to learn about only invest, only borrow money for things that go up in value. Mm. And then you're using debt wisely instead of things that go down and depreciate. But either way, you got to look at what you got out of it. Once you stack up enough benefits, the, the ability to pay it goes up. It's easier to make the money for it. It's easier to hand it over to, mm. to pay. Then the second thing when you have debt is to to write down and break it down to small chunks. Let's say you owe a quarter of a million dollars, two hundred fifty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. And go, okay, and you're having to pay, say, $24,000 a year. That's $2,000 a month. That's $500 a week. That's $100 a day. And that's basically uh, $15 an hour. When you break it down into small bites, and, and, it, and it, by the inch, it's a cinch. And then you convert it into units of service. And then all of a sudden you go, oh, the amount of money that I'm actually doing is only one unit of service every hour or every two hours. And once you convert debt into service, you service the debt by focusing on serving people and, and the debt goes away. If you focus on the debt, the service goes away. So you always have to convert debt into service and, and be grateful for it. And when you're grateful for being able to serve, you end up making prosperity and you have the debt disappear. And then you learn not to get yourself in debt for things that are depreciables 
but only put yourself into debt for things that appreciate, that pay more than the cost of the debt. So you're using and leveraging other people's money to make great fortunes. And now you're learning how to be grateful for the management of money wisely. Mm. Good debt versus bad debt. Well, I, I It's know. not even good and bad. It's just you're learning to prioritize your debt into a way where it's making you money. Mm. Okay, thank you. So from a, a beginner's guide to gratitude would be take from making focusing on the things you can be grateful day. Yeah, just make it a, a habit of it. Uh, you know, if you set a goal that is in alignment and congruent with what you value most, where you have the highest probability of achieving it, at the end of the day, if you've chunked it down and strategized it in small bites, you're going to be grateful because mm-hmm. you're going to get accomplished the things you set out for and you're going to have plenty to be grateful for. But if you set up fantasies and you set up expectations that are not aligned with your values or you expect other people to live outside their values, you're going to set yourself up getting feedback to let you know that you're, you're doing foolish things and you're going to have more difficulty finding out how it's blessing. The blessing will be is that you're going down a path of expecting others to live in your values, expecting others to be one-sided, expecting you to live outside your values, expecting you to be one-sided. And those are going to give you feedback that are challenges. And the blessing is that it's guiding you to set goals that are real, that are according to your values, that are balanced. Mm. And so no matter what, you can, you can find how it serves you. Either it's serving you by confirmation that you're on track or by serving you by showing you that that's, there's a refinement in the way you're setting your objectives. Mm. Either way, you can be grateful for it. And that's the, the gift of gratitude. So just to share a real life experience for me of how this has been applied was when we were, I was talking the other day about how the certain things that I won't share and coach clients, or, well, you know, it's not about coaching clients, but I won't um, assist clients with if I haven't done yet. Because one of the things that I always like to do, say is that I'm congruent. So I say that I'm congruent and I'm aligned with my values and I'm aligned with my goals. My goal, one of my big goals, I want to empower a billion people throughout my lifetime. And when we were talking about not, uh, when you shared about the fact that you were teaching and then, sorry, you were reading a book and then teaching it in the afternoon, I thought to myself, I sat back and asked myself better questions because the quality of your life is dependent on the quality of the questions you ask yourself. And I, I reflected and I said, so why is that? Why is it that I didn't want to do it? Well, the first answer that comes to my head is because for me, that wasn't being congruent. And then I had to ask myself, well, what is being congruent? And then I said to myself, well, what is my highest value? What do I prefer more? Is it more about making it about me and the fact that I'm actually, that I've done this thing and it's the Will Polston show, or is it about truly serving other people? Because if it's truly about serving other people and I can, I can teach myself a methodology that I'm working through that I'm only a couple of steps ahead of them on and it can be helping their progress, well, that was being more congruent and therefore I was incongruent by actually not doing it. Well, it depends. You know, congruent has many different meanings to people. Um, I didn't come from the idea that I had to uh, live everything that I read. I didn't have that expectation. I came from the idea that I'm going to read great books and fill my mind with some of the greatest ideas by the greatest thinkers. And I would like to pass that on and share with them a more efficient way of getting it because the probability of them list reading those books is much less. Mm. And so if I can go and read four to seven books in a few hours, and then I can go and share that, download that, and summarize that in a few hours, I've just saved them probably 15 hours worth of work, 20 hours worth of work, and I did it three, and they can take notes, and they can be exposed to great ideas. I'm not claiming that I've mastered or learned everything, and I'm not putting that as an expectation. I'm just sharing like a book, just like if you go and buy a book summary, you're not necessarily expecting that the person that sells you the book summary is going to be doing everything on 3,000 books, but they're passing on information that could be valuable that matches some of the people at different times in their life. So I went at the idea that I, I didn't try to distort what I was doing. I didn't ex- claim that I had learned everything on these books. I just said that I'm, I'm going to summarize books for you. If you'd like to join me, come. Mm-hmm. And in the process of doing it, I had 15 to 20 people every night mm-hmm. coming and spending three hours wanting to summarize those books because it was saving them time. The amount of cost was the price of one book and they're getting a whole bunch of books summarized at the price of one book in three hours instead of 15 hours at five, at five times the book cost. So it was, a, it was a service to them and saving them time and money and we both learned and by me teaching it, I learned it and I had a higher probability of applying it and so did they. So I didn't have this expectation that I had to learn everything or otherwise 
you know, I'd be holding myself back actually from what I was what I was developing. Which which was exactly the insight that I had. So uh, it was the meaning that I'd place on the word congruent. Yeah. That and then when I unraveled that, so well, what does congruent mean? For me, it's like well, I have to be living what it is that I'm sharing. Well, that is, is that true? And sort of do the work, Bar and Casey. Is that true? No. No. Okay. Cool. Right. So let's let's change that. Well, what is for me and being congruent and for me being congruent was being living in line to my highest values. My highest value was, uh, well, my, my, one of my higher values was being able to serve others over myself and creating win-win situations and that are beneficial. Yeah, exactly. So, so you know, uh, I learned a long time ago, I, I remember when I was speaking, I was probably 28 and I was asked to speak because I grew my practice very well and I asked to speak at this conference and I told him, I said, there's guys on there that had a thousand patients in a, in a week at practice and mine hadn't reached that level yet. I said, I haven't reached a thousand a week, but I have done something pretty out of the ordinary. You know, I went to, I'm now having five doctors and 12 staff members in 18 months from opening up my office, mm -hmm. which most people never do in their whole practice years. I said, so that's an achievement, but I don't have a thousand patients in a week, you know, maybe half that, a little, a little over half that. And uh, the guy, the guy was who has seen a thousand. He said, "Yeah, but what you've done is extraordinary. It took me thirteen years to see a thousand, and you're sitting at almost six hundred in a year and a half, year and eight, eighteen months." I said, "So I'm here to listen to you." I said, "Well, so the congruency has got to read a definition. The congruency was that I was committed to making a service to people and doing it as effectively as I could, but I didn't necessarily have the record." And I, and, I, and I, so do I wait until I have the record before I can speak? No, what I'm speaking will be of service to people. Mm. And so I had to look at what, what was my primary objective. And it was passing on information and sharing information with people, what I, what I love doing. Now, it goes along along the way that many times um, you end up becoming congruent in the other classical way where you're living and walking the talk that you're doing. And I'm a firm believer that there's wisdom in that. But it doesn't mean that everything I teach, I have to be living. I could just be passing on. I said, I read this, this amazing book last night and it's on this particular field and, I, and I'm not in that field, but I want to pass on the amazing information I passed on. I pass it on. Mm. And my, now I'm being congruent with my message of being a teacher, passing on the most important information I can to people. So it depends on what you're defining as mm. the objective. So important. So to, to round up then, I know there'll be people listening right now and they'll be saying, yeah, well, I, I get that, but... I'm really struggling right now. I'm really in a position whereby I just, I just, I'm in such a dark place. I can't see the gratitude. Are there any specific questions that you ask yourself, and the, therefore that the listener can ask themselves yeah, to help find quit that? lying to themselves? Mm -hmm. When somebody says I don't know, I'm not, and I can't, that means they don't have a drive to go digging. Mm. If they dig, they'll find it. So don't stop. Keep looking. Look again. <laughs> just keep looking, and you'll find it. It's there. It's not missing. You just haven't taken the time to look. You've chosen to be right with your opinion instead of be loving and appreciative of the event. And as, as long as you want to be right, make it wrong and make it, be hurt by it and be a victim, well, then you're going, to play, you're going to play disempowered. So you can be a victim of your history. You can be a master of your destiny. If you're grateful and you see things on the way, you're going to get a master of your destiny. So how, how important is that to you? If it is, you'll go dig and you'll find it. And I have yet to find a situation that can't have something to be grateful for. Life doesn't, years. life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. It happens for you, exactly. It's, it's ultimately on the way. And I've had many challenges. I mean, I, I've, I, could, I could list tons of challenges in my life. Being shot at, I've been, you know, almost uh, stabbed. I mean, I've had all kinds of things. And uh, the, all those things are all parts of my journey. And I can look back now and I've, they got amazing stories that inspire people today. So there, weren't, there was no mistakes in that. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, Dr. Martini, Dr. John D. Martini, thank you so much for joining us on the Mindset with Neil World podcast. I'm extremely grateful and thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And whoever's listening out there, uh, I have one last statement. A little statement that really was helpful to me uh, is a statement, a little statement you can just give to yourself. It says, I now give myself permission to do something extraordinary on planet Earth. Say that to yourself every day and, and then document what what in your heart you would really love to bring to the planet. Because nobody's gonna get up in the morning and dedicate their life to you. It's up to you. And if you decide, you don't let other people decide. Any area of your life you don't empower, somebody's gonna overpower. So give yourself the empowerment of asking quality questions that lead you to incredible outcomes. Amazing, thank you very much. Until next time, make it happen. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast. Make sure you join Will's free Facebook group, the Make It Happen community. Please support the show by subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or Google Play. Share this episode with at least one friend you think would benefit from it and give Will a five-star review wherever you download your podcasts. Until next time, make it happen.